Hey guys, my name is Palmer Hatch and I work for Frito-Lay. Um, Frito-Lay is the company that brings wonderful products to you like Cheetos, Doritos, and our partner company is PepsiCo, so it makes products like Pepsi, Mountain Dew, um, mug root beer and all that jazz. So I work on the, on the snack food side. So I work up in West Valley, Utah. There's plants all over the, all over the nation. Um, I work at the one here in Utah. Um, and so at our plant, we have two tortilla, tortilla chip lines, one potato chip line and another fried Cheeto line. Um, so what do I do? So I am a engineering slash maintenance manager. So a lot of the jobs that you get um, right out of college, um, a lot of times are like people management positions. And so uh, I am currently over about 30 maintenance mechanics. Um, I'm also in charge of making sure all of the different equipment or tools to work and fix the plant are available. So I have a, a purchasing agent. Um, I also have two maintenance work schedulers that schedule the work for all the maintenance workers and technicians. Um, and so my job as a manager, and one of the reasons I love being a people manager is my whole job is to remove the obstacles from the people that work for me's everyday uh, work life. And it honestly brings a lot of joy because if you think about it, after you get done with school, a huge portion of your life is working. And, you know, you might have a parent or a relative or something like that, that, you know, 80% of their life happiness is dependent on, you know, how much they're making or what their work environment's like. And so for me as a manager, I can really impact, you know, the people that I manage and, and make work a more enjoyable experience. And so what does that look like? Um, you know, it's working through team issues. You know, if some team members are not getting along, I can kind of insert myself and, and figure out what exactly the problem is. Um, I also manage a lot of the different engineering products that, uh, projects that happen at the plant. So essentially, there's huge machines that make Cheetos. And if any of you are curious, um, there's a ton of awesome videos. If you just look up Frito-Lay plant online, there's huge, huge, huge uh, machines that you know, produce all the different chips that we make. Um, you know, there's a lot, a lot of times there's issues with chips not being made fast enough or chips getting crunched and, and aren't like the big, nice size chips that we like. Um, and so there's a lot of projects and a lot of work to be done and making sure that you guys as the consumer get the best Dorito, Cheeto, Frito you can. Um, so yeah, definitely my favorite part is impacting the lives of the people that um, that work for me and, and managing the obstacles in their life, not only in work, but also outside of work. Um, man, I'm thinking about a crazy story. Um, <laughs> so, so let's say not every chip that we make ends up in the final bag. There's a lot of waste. And so um, every day we actually take the waste that we get and we put it in a truck and it gets sent to a farm to feed farm animals. So that way, you know, there's not a whole lot of, we're not just throwing away waste, it's actually being used and sent back um, into the ecosystem. So, with that, we have this huge machine that kind of funnels all this waste up into the trailer. Well, it broke and it broke real bad. And so I was in charge of finding a uh, piece of equipment that 
could essentially smash all the chips and other waste that we have um, into the system so the system doesn't get clogged. So I purchased a $20,000 rock crusher and to see if that would solve our problem. And I had no idea what was gonna happen. I had a pretty good idea that it was gonna work. Um, and so we got one forklift and stuck this huge rock crusher in the middle of the air. And then we poured um, all that waste into the rock crusher and we had a, a tote at the bottom to collect all the crushed material. Well, your boy was on a ladder trying to take a video to see if this was something that we could use. I didn't realize that it was gonna be a windy day. So I had month old gross corn and potatoes and moldy everything just all over my body. And then I had to walk through all of the offices in the front and everyone made fun of me. <laughs> Um, definitely not an everyday occurrence, but, um, something that, you know, made my, broke up the mundaneness of the day a little bit. Um, so what kind of school? So there's a lot of positions at Frito-Lay. Um, I guess to keep it short and just talk a little bit about my position. Um, so you have to, you have to have a college degree to be in my position. And when you get to a lot of these bigger companies, um, that's what they require. They want people who, um, you know, I have a lot of opinions about college and how helpful it can be, but one of the biggest tools that companies use college for is just kind of funneling people who are willing to work hard, um, people who are willing to um, fight through adversity and, and get good grades and um, also build social skills that you otherwise wouldn't really get. Um, unless you went to college and working in that sort of academic work environment. Um, along with that, and, you know, the advice I give anybody who is about to go to college or about to go to high school is, you know, build your experiences now. Um, you know, after my first semester of college, I decided that I wanted to try to get an internship and internships are super helpful in one, not only getting like job experience and figuring out how to function in the workspace, but also it shows those uh, people like these big companies or any company for that matter, um, that you have prior experience and you've worked in an environment and you've been successful in other environments. And that's a huge win for, for any job or any company that you work for, whether you go to college or not, um, that sort of experience and you dominating in that sphere, whatever it is, whether you're working at a fast food place or whether you're, you know, working at a clothing store or, you know, whatever typical job you have as a, um, as a, you know, middle school or high schooler, um, you know, that shows that you're a hard worker. Um, what lessons did I learn in middle school and high school that helped prepare me for the future? Why was it important to work hard? Um, <clears throat> man, I think that one of the biggest values that I had in middle school and high school was learning that working hard I can succeed. And not a lot of people, you know, you know, I'll be honest, me and most of my friends and, 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 met, and everybody in middle school and high school, you know, you may not be the most confident person or you may be a little too confident. Um, but I think at the end of the day, like working hard and realizing that I could achieve something that I wasn't sure if I could achieve was a huge confident booster and something that propelled has like essentially really helped me throughout my life. Um, because now when I am faced with a challenge, whether it's at work or whether it's something, you know, in my home life, um, 
you know, I can sit back and reflect on those experiences and say, hey, I've been through a hard thing before. What did I do in that experience to overcome that challenge or that barrier? If you don't try or if you don't work hard, you just simply, those experiences, those tough times don't go away. And no matter what you end up doing in life. And so if you get a head start on, in middle school and high school, um, you have more and more experiences to lean back on later in life. You know, whether it's when you have a full-time job like me, whether it's you have a family, whether it's, you know, you're going to, you know, university or, or whatever. Um, and finally, you know, one piece of advice that I want to give to everybody is... Um, do cool stuff. I know that sounds kind of weird, but um, I feel like so many people want to have their life so structured and so organized. You, know, you, you gotta go to middle school and get good grades. You gotta go to high school, get good grades. You gotta go to college to get good grades or to get in middle school or, or whatever your, your dream is. And those are all important. You have to, like I said, you have to do the work to have the confidence, but also to be able to face those challenges later on in life. Um, but more importantly, you need to do interesting stuff that's outside of that. Um, one of my coolest friends that I have, who actually went to Yale University, which is an Ivy League school, um, I lived with him for about nine months. And after living with him for nine months, I realized that you know, there wasn't a whole lot different between him and I. Obviously, I'm, I wasn't as, I wasn't going to the same level of university that he was, um, but I recognized that we weren't really that different in intelligence or, or our ability to, you know, do work. Um, he ended up being this really interesting dude who was a bird watcher all throughout middle school and high school, and he did bird watching competitions. Now, I'm not saying that that's what you have to do, but I'm saying, you know, find things that you think are interesting and dive deep into them. Get educational about it. You don't have to learn school at school. There's so many other resources for you guys to go online, YouTube, Wikipedia, you know, using other online resources to search and learn and educate yourselves about things that are interesting to you. And if you have that, what do we call it? If you have that um, desire to learn and to learn by yourself, man, that's going to be a great skill that will propel you throughout the rest of your life. So hopefully that was helpful, guys. Um, Frito-Lay is an awesome place to work. So if you do get the, ch the chance to interview or, you know, work there, go for it. It's awesome. You get free chips, you get free drinks. Uh, you know, that's 80% of life, right? <laughs> so thanks guys. And, and have a great rest of your day.